Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to PHP Programming Lesson 45, and we're continuing Query a Database Part 3, and we're actually going to finish up our uh, CRUD operations today and just make a few more modifications, of course, to the program. So let's go right to Eclipse. So last time we learned how to retrieve a record set uh, by ID. We learned how to add a record set by ID, and we also learned how to add a record set by uh, incrementation or auto-incrementation. And we just have a few more commands to cover here for before we're actually done with this database class. And let's take a look at those right now. Once you've created a record set or you've actually inserted data into a database uh, for a row, for example, you actually want to go in there and modify it. And modification is not too bad. You can once again use your SQL language update, choose the table name, set the parameters, and then the ID where, and of course, in order to do where, you've got to bind all these question marks. And so we're going to use our param bind as we used last time. And we see that's going to be an I, S, and four I's. Now, why is it going to be four I's? Because you're going to bind the first five, right? And the last one needs to be bound as well. And that will both be ID, so actually, so actually the ID that you're going to be setting will also be your where ID as well. And you can see that in our... Uh, and you can see that in our array item right here, when you have zero here, the very last item is going to be, let's move that over so you can see it, is going to be the zeroth item as well. So this actually just goes very well, just extremely simple, we're going to just run the method and update our database. So let's come along to the bottom here and do that. So now let's uncomment two lines of code and actually uh, update our database. So line six we had basically, uh, or in ID six we actually had Abram, which was the father, or the non-father yet of... Uh, many nations and then he was visited by God and in the process uh, he was given a promise to be a father of many nations and his name was changed to Abraham so let's update our array to say Abraham so we're just going to create this array item and we're just going to use our update interface and shoot that array in there and use the update SQL to update that database let's go ahead and run the command and see how it works and it said I was connected so evidently something's happened so let's come back and uh, comment out this one line of code right here and let's just get all the database information and see if Abraham was updated to Abraham. And indeed, you can see right here, Abraham was updated to Abraham according to the blessings of God. And so let's go back now and look at the last few commands that we need to deal with. So we've got the update command working. So if you can create, and you can read, and you can update, you definitely want to be able to delete. And delete is a very simple command. You just delete by some ID, for example. And you can see in your query information, it's delete from the table and the ID is what and you just basically bind that ID parameter using the bind uh, param to the SQL statement that you've prepared. So let's go ahead and run this uh, information and see if we can get this to work. And let's just go ahead and delete Abraham completely. Let's say that's just too much information for audience to stand, for example. And we'll try to delete uh, item ID6 because that's the last uh, uh, database uh, entry there. So we'll go ahead and save this and we'll run this and see if we delete Abraham. And we ran it and it said you're connected, which means something happened. So we're going to go back and run the uh, get all information or uh, our method that says you'll get all information. And let's go and run that and see if Abraham no longer exists. And indeed, you see your sixth item has been subtracted from the database and Abraham is no longer there. Okay, let's go back and uh, look at a few more commands. Uh, it's often necessary to get the entire count of a database, and this one right here actually allows you to get the count of your database. The SQL command is just select count uh, wildcard as from the data table, and that will give you all the uh, records in your database, or at least a count of all the records. Let's go ahead and run this command. And it's just uh, uh, my database uh, count. So let's run it and see what happens. And it returns a count of being five. So that worked just fine. We just have one more command to consider. As many times when you have very large databases, you need to be able to page through those database systems. And so we're going to create a paging system. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that command. And in my paging system, I'm just going to receive two indexes. Uh, the first one's going to tell me where to start paging, and the second one's going to tell me where to stop. And then once again, I have my select from the table. And here's this limit command that's going to take me from one index to the other. Very simply done uh, using the query language. And I'm going to bind these parameters to start and the end using the II. So all those question marks are bound to these actual items that's inputted through the uh, method itself. And once again, I'm just going to run the command and do all the same things I've done before in the database. And so it just runs pretty nicely. So let's go ahead and uh, run this last command. 
And uh, basically that query only pulls out those particular records. And then, then since it fetches all of those and sends those back is actually what's happening with the SQL. So let's run it and see what happens. And indeed, we're seeing that we only get a certain set of record sets. And it starts with ID2 and stops with ID3, and that doesn't make any sense, right? Let's go back and take a look at that one more time. I actually went from 1 to 2. Why did I get from 2 to 3? And the reason is, once again, remember your indexing. 1 is actually 2, and 2 is actually 3. So just keep that in mind. Remember, always the indexing is 1 behind or 1 ahead. And so that's the end of all the, our database stuff. We're completed with this particular uh, database class. And now we're going to start to work with it and do a lot with it. Let me just say one more thing. What's important here is, is that we haven't actually put any security in this system. So it is open to SQL injection. And we're going to start talking about ways to keep that from happening uh, in the future. Let's just quickly review what we learned in this lesson. We just basically just covered a few new methods. After creating records in the last lesson, we learned how to update those uh, records. Then we learned how to delete those records. Then we learned how to count those records. And finally, we learned how to page through those records uh, using the fetch command. So basically, when you first saw these SQLI commands, they may have been a little bit confusing. But now as you see them used over and over again and how they're used, it should make a lot of sense to you. So next time, we're going to learn how to order your pages and kind of start beefing up the program to handle some security issues. Uh, so uh, thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time. This was Mike Lively.